Hey guys, winter's upon us. It's cold outside, but you know what? I've got a technique that I've been using for years to catch bass when it's been cold outside, and I think it'll help you out. So let's get into it. So after I read this article in Bassmaster Magazine, I think it was called the Buddy System or something like that, I went to a, a lake that I'd been to many times in the winter trying to catch catch smallmouth and never really had been able to do it on the jerk baits and things like that. And I found an area that I thought looked pretty good for using this technique. I had the big rocks, ledges, and using the buddy, I worked it down the ledge and I actually ended up catching my biggest smallmouth ever and then catching a lot of good smallmouth that day and I'll never forget it. Uh, it really introduced me into a new technique of fishing in the winter time. So I've been kind of doing that ever since with the buddy and also with little spoons and bigger spoons and spinner baits and things like that in that deeper water. Uh, but it really is a technique that can help you catch more fish in the winter time. When bass go out to those what they call winter haunts, you know, they get down there in that 30, 40, 50 feet of water, they're honkering down for the winter. Sometimes they get a warm day and they may cruise up, but typically day to day they're staying in that deeper water. It's it's hard to it's hard to target those fish and it's it's also hard to use something that's that's real slow, at least for me, you know, th throwing a jig, throwing a worm, throwing a Carolina rig and just letting it sit there forever. Because what you have to realize in the winter time, you know, bass are cold blooded. So when the water's cold, they're not gonna move very fast. And if something is moving through there like a jig per se, and they're they're slowly going over to it and, and it is moving faster than what they think the other crawfish and other bluegill and bait fish should be moving around them, they're not gonna be interested because they they know that they're not gonna be able to chase that thing down. And two, it doesn't look natural. So this technique is really more of a reaction strike. When you get those shad in the winter time, they, they get cold uh, and, and they do this, this little, the dart of death, as I like to call it. Uh, and it's like their, their last moments of life trying to, to, to spurt out and uh, get away. That really triggers bass to strike. And these little buddies and the spoons do that very well. So let's get into the buddy a little bit. You know, this basically acts like, if you think of a rattle trap, a lipless crankbait. Same kind of action on this, okay? It's got a vibrating action to it. Um, it has a uh, lead weight on the bottom, and then it's just, it just, it's a blade with two treble hooks on it. And I fish this one differently than I fish the spoon. I fish this one a little bit slower, and I also let it sit on the bottom a lot of times. Um, you're just able to do that and, and it, it really seems to work on this buddy. So when you're working it down the ledge and you get to each little stair step with this buddy I like to just slowly lift the rod and you'll feel it vibrate and then you're just going to let it down and let it sit there a few seconds and then lift it up and then let it go back down. You don't want to lift it very high um, you know, especially when the water is really cold you just want to keep a a slow little vibrating pace and every time you get to a ledge you want to pay attention to your line make sure you're letting that line and that's why a lot of times I'll use spinning gear it's just whatever you're comfortable with you can use spinning gear or casting gear let line out I can let line out very easily with this and so it'll it'll go down the ledge and that's when you're gonna get your strikes when it drops off into one of those stair steps and then it's sitting there or do you lift it back up that's when they're gonna strike it so Buddy is an awesome bait for doing that. And I also like to use a spoon in a pretty similar way, except I usually move the spoon just faster. I'll just work it down the ledge and I'm hopping it, hopping it. And I like to use, this is a Bass Pro Shops Windrider spoon. Castmaster also makes a similar brand. This is just about half the price. so. Um, you know guys I use a lot of spoons if you if you want me to go into more depth about using these spoons click the like button tell me you you, you want me to do another video in the comments I'll eventually do one um, but these little spoons right here this is a half ounce killer bait in the winter time too summer and fall as well certain situations but 
just the way this thing darts when it falls and the effectiveness of it working it in deeper water is really good for wintertime fishing and especially working down those ledges so same same concept applies lift it up let it go down make sure you pay attention to your line so that you know when it's going down those stair steps and you're getting as close as possible as you can because if you don't let out line it's going to swing out past the strike zone so um, love these little baits and you know color wise you can get them in nickel you can get them in gold um, te technically uh, I love I love this color the nickel the most um, I use gold if it's a little bit more stained water or if it's an overcast day you get a little bit more uh, flash out of that gold so uh, but nickel it's, it's just a solid solid color so let's get into uh, the gear a little bit when you're using these spoons and these buddies so like I said guys gear wise you can use whatever you're comfortable with if you're comfortable with spinning gear you can use that if you're comfortable with casting gear use that but on the rod make sure you're using about a three power action and the reason is when you get down in there in that deeper water that 30 40 50 feet of water even you want to make sure you have a rod that's got some backbone on it because when you're going to lift that that rod and you've got all that line out and you're going to have a little stretch you want to make sure you got some backbone be able to set the hook and also work the bait effectively and feel the strike that's also very important so i like to use at least a seven foot uh, and a three power action rod which is basically a, a medium maybe a little bit above a medium uh, in between a medium medium heavy um, so you know this is a Dobbins uh, this is a 703 but uh, a lot of times I like to use uh, a 7 733 you know 743 uh, something that's a little bit over even a 76 uh, works really good you're gonna be able to take up more line the longer the rod is so keep that in mind so get you a medium between medium medium heavy action that three power seems to work great and on the line I wouldn't use mono because mono's got quite a bit of stretch in it I like to use fluorocarbon you know somewhere between 12 15 pound test or I'll even use braid a lot of times like I've almost exclusively gone to braid on my, my spinning uh, spinning gear um, except for some drop shots but like here I've got 10 pound uh, power pro super slick the stuff's awesome and when I'm fishing this in, in very deep water I still have that that sensitivity and I can stay in connection with my line or my lure very well I still put a I got a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader on here um, you know the braid tends to float a little bit so I wouldn't go high on the braid 20 30 that may be a little little bit too much but uh, you know when you're fishing fishing these baits this is a half ounce you can go up to a three quarter even a one uh, you're gonna get it down there pretty good so um, but main thing main thing make sure your rod is uh, got enough backbone to where you're gonna lift it up you're gonna feel the bait stay in connection with it so those are those are the key things you want to keep in mind when you're fishing the buddy and the spoons on the gear key things to keep in mind when you're fishing the buddies and the spoons down these stair steps a lot of times these bass will get grouped up they'll get in little groups on these different sets of ledges so make sure you're paying attention to where you're getting bites you can really focus in and say hey I'm getting bites in 35 feet of water and that way you know I'm gonna work it a little bit quicker down that ledge and then when I get to that for 35 feet I'm really gonna slow it down and make sure I'm working the area good really watching my line it'll make you a more effective fisherman the second thing is when you do get a strike you can always let your line out and let it go back down to the bottom I can't tell you how many times I've seen this happen to where the bass will actually swim over to swim over to the the blade or the, the spoon and actually pick it up off the bottom and a lot of times we don't think about that with with spoons you know you, you're thinking about just hopping it a lot but they will actually come over and pick it up off the bottom just like a shad would would do its last little twitch and then sink down to the bottom so keep that in mind as well you can also get 
get some good bites doing that. But main thing is you can catch big fish this time of year fishing out deep on these stair steps using this technique. It's, it's something I've been using for years and you know when you're not getting those bites up, up shallow on the, on the jerk bait and, and other things like that, waters in the 40s, low 50s, head out there to those ledges and see what you can do. So hope this helps you guys. I've, uh, I've enjoyed making videos for you all year. Make sure you, you hit the like button and I'll see you guys in 2014. Catch you guys later.